galera, sejam bem-vindos ao vlog Hoje a gente tá na casa do Shahar, mais conhecido como The Vipers Guy E ele tem a maior coleção de carros, réplica do Velozes Furiosos do mundo Oficialmente do mundo agora que ele comprou esse R34 Que ele vai vir aqui daqui a pouco e vai explicar pra gente essa história incrível de quando ele comprou esse carro E preparou em uma semana pro Cima Show uma réplica perfeita então agora o Shahar vai, com, vai contar um pouco pra gente da história desse carro que ele construiu em uma semana You built this car in one week for SEMA show, how was it? Yeah. Basically I cannot take all, my, all the credit, I have a friend of mine, his name is uh, Martin from Canada from uh, Fast and Furious Park. Martin had my car since 2020, so I bought this car in 2020, uh, four years ago in Canada and he was storing the car for me basically this whole time and basically what we did is during that time we ordered the C-West body kit for it uh, we got the wheels for it the seats pretty much everything we needed to start the build mm -hmm. so we gathered all the parts and then I got the call from the nice folks at uh, Liquid Mali that wanted a Fast and Furious uh, uh, booth car in their SEMA presentation and they asked me hey um, is your car ready? Back then the car was like bone stock <laughs> and I told them it's it's not ready but it can be and they're like okay um, SEMA is like a month away do you think you can make it? <laughs> uh, sure of course I can make it so I called Martin and I'm like hey Martin can we can we make it in time for SEMA can we do it he's like yeah yeah for sure so <laughs> in the meantime time goes by we order more parts we order the tires we order the underglow from street glow and then I hopped on a flight, I landed in Canada, in Vancouver, on a Sunday. This whole week, Martin rented a uh, spray booth from a friend of him, and we never slept for four days. Oh, really? We didn't sleep. Oh my God. I have videos of Martin spraying the car at like 3 a.m. in the morning. I have photos of me sleeping on the on the in, on the floor in, in the spray booth inside. <laughs> so basically, first day we got the car. The car was bone stock. Um, we disassembled the whole car. Hoods off, uh, fenders, doors, body, bumpers. Everything is off. We painted everything inside out. We started installing the body kit. All the interior went out, we did the door jams, we did the trunk jams, we did the shock towers, we painted everything we could. So the car is painted, the car was white, mm -hmm. inside out. Everything pretty much in five days, um, let things dry, working on the other stuff, blocking the car. After five days, the car was, the paint was probably, I don't know, seven hours old, okay? We got there in the morning. We fire up the car, we we open the, the spray booth doors, I put in my GPS home, <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours, we just started driving. Para, 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 para tudo, nesse vídeo vai ter sorteio de Pix, vou sortear mais 20 reais para quem comentar qual seria a sua garagem do Velozes e Furiosos dos sonhos. Escolhe três carros do Velozes e Furiosos de qualquer um dos filmes que você teria na sua garagem qual seria a sua garagem do Velozes e Furiosos dos Sonhos? Comenta aqui embaixo e assista até o final, porque no final do vídeo eu vou sortear quem foi o ganhador do último vídeo. Vambora! E você comprou isso em 2020 e deixou isso no Canadá, porque é a coisa do tempo dos anos do carro para importar para a América, certo? Nos Estados Unidos, há uma lei de 25 anos, então em 2020 nós fomos capazes de trazer os R33s Três. Mm -hmm. The US and in 2024 we were able to start bringing the RT4 okay. so like 1998, 1999. This is a Skyline GTT, so GTT started manufacturing in 98 mm -hmm. actually. So it was a nice, nice thing um, that we were able to do it. So we drove the car here, we got here on Friday evening. Uh, my buddy Elshad came by, started helping us washing the car because it was all dirty from the, from the actual drive. Still has some scars and rock chips from the drive. We took it straight uh, to red with LRG. He did the graphics on it. Mm -hmm. That was on a Saturday. 
on Sunday I picked up the car me and my buddy Sheer we installed the wing on Sunday Sunday night Monday I drove the car to Vegas straight to the SEMA show oh that's nice that's a story you you'll never forget this it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> it was truly crazy we we never thought we we're gonna make it <laughs> <laughs> and everything is original right yeah like you always do yeah bumpers wheels yeah. everything hand-picked and original that's nice Definitely. a few years to get all the parts but it came up super nice uh, everybody in at SEMA went crazy for it after we got back to SEMA he went to SEMA with stock interior mm -hmm. after we got back from SEMA uh, my buddy Alex with uh, MST upholstery did all the, the interior stuff on it so he took out he took everything out like the seats and everything and redid pretty much everything interior related so we got the the Alcantara we got the silver and blue we got some some samples of blue and silver from the original guys uh, that did the movie cars mm -hmm. in Miami Shamrock because that that's some uh, one thing people don't usually remember about the movie car the interior, the, the, the interior. Correct. Every everyone thinks it, it was black and stuff but it was actually silver yeah. and blue. It actually yeah. didn't have a passenger seat. It had the nitrous tanks. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. I'm still, I'm that's still right. supposed to do, but <laughs> I really wanted my wife to come with me in the car. So yeah, I yeah. wanted the passenger seat uh -huh. instead of the nitrous tanks. <laughs> so it, it came off nice. It came off really, really nice. It's awesome. Thank you, man. The original stuff really... Like you see a lot of replicas with uh replica wheels not the same wheels not the same spoiler but everything original it's uh i try it's a I step up to do it as, as accurate as possible obviously sometimes it's a lot of money sometimes it's yeah. a lot of research um and it's hard to find the yeah the pieces right sometimes i would find a set of wheels and it would be in, a, in another side of the us or in europe or whatever and people would not want to ship it to me. Uh huh. Like I would beg people. I would. It's like okay, I want five hundred dollar for the the wheels. I'll give you one thousand. Just ship it to uh -huh. Los Angeles. No. Nope. And he doesn't want the hassle. Yeah, like I, I found, I found the movie correct wheels for the Honda Civic in North Carolina. Uh, the guy wanted five hundred dollars for them, and I told him, listen, I'll pay the shipping, whatever it may be. Just physically take the wheels to. The UPS store, physically give them the wheels, tell them you pack it, you put it in a mm -hmm. in a box and everything, and ship it. Whatever it costs, I'll pay, and I'll pay you another extra three hundred dollars for your time, just to physically put the wheels in the car and drive to the UPS. Mm -hmm. store. We wouldn't do it. Oh my god, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> that must be really fr frustrating. Yeah, and it's like the only set I've found in like three, four years for the Civic. Uh huh. It's crazy. It's tough. In Brazil, forget it. You're not gonna find anything. And in Brazil, to mail stuff from abroad, they usually it gets on customs and it goes back. So in Brazil, you couldn't do this, like import wheels from Europe, import a car from another country. Forget it. The RX-7, half of the car came in from London, from uh, from the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Our friend Phil uh, got me the wheels, got me the body kit. A bunch of stuff came from from Europe. The steering wheel came from Japan. A lot of the interior parts came from Japan. And the R34 actually came from Japan, right? Because it's a uh, yeah, of course, the right-hand drive. In in Canada, what they do is they they're allowed to import those cars mm -hmm. when they're 15 years old. Oh, okay. So someone imported to Canada so and then sold it to you. Correct. So the the market of Skylines in Canada is actually easier. Mm -hmm. And. In 2020, it was even cheaper than getting it from Japan and started shipping it. So it was already there. It already had the, the registration, the title. Everything was already converted to Canadian. Oh, you got the wires too. Yeah. That's nice. The same steering wheel as the movie. The wires. That's really nice. That's my favorite car of all. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When I was growing up, this one, this one was the car that I wanted. Funny enough, I have a friend, his name is Alex. Um, in 
2019, I just moved to the U.S. from Israel in 2018. But in 2019, I've already built the the green eclipse and the purple eclipse, and I wanted to build this car. Mm -hmm. And I was searching for it, and I found one uh, on Facebook Marketplace. And I went to meet this Alex guy. Today is my friend, and I went to to buy this car, a GTT. Mm -hmm. So it was silver. I test drove it. I loved it. We we settled for, I think it was twenty six thousand dollars. Oh my god! Which was really cheap back then. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to the bank. And I'm gonna get the money. I'm gonna buy the car. So on my way to the bank, I'm I'm calling some friends, uh, and they're telling me, "Hey, RT4s are illegal in the USA. It's federally illegal. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. You're gonna put fifty thousand dollars on uh, on modification, and then the feds is just gonna take it away." Mm -hmm. So I called a guy and I told him, "Listen, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna buy the car because this and that. I'm freaked out. I don't know what I'm doing." And this is how the RX-7 idea was born. Because I was oh, like, I didn't know that. I, I went to the bank. I physically had the money in my hand, and I was, and uh, the, my friends just wouldn't let me buy the car. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, what am I gonna do with this money? I was I was already <laughs> in my mind. I was already buying the car and doing the project. So I just I searched for the next best thing, and that was the RX-7. The RX-7. And I just started building the RX-7. That's a great story too. Nice! O Shahar falou que o motor tá original, que nem no filme, e eles só colocaram o intercooler grande, é claro, conectaram o intercooler e tal. nice. 2.5 liter, nothing, nothing impressive uh, under the hood. At the moment, it's pretty, it's pretty stuck. I was focusing on doing the, the cosmetics exterior. and then the. Can so we I see can, the engine? So I can go to the to the sim, I show yeah. Doesn't look so good, so I still need to work on it. It's that. fine. It's an R34. Even if it's covered in dirt, it looks good. No, uh, it's not fine <laughs> because nice. it, because of Canada and the snow, it uh -huh. has like the corrosion. So I need to do. I have the gentlemen from uh, G Technique uh, uh, going to help me with uh, ice uh, ice blasting ice to blast, get up the yeah. aluminum. Yeah, that's a new thing. Yeah, and it comes makes, really good. It's gonna make it look really nice and new. <laughs> Cara, e esse R34 tá tão tão preciso, tão certinho que o Cody Walker assinou. E o diretor técnico do Velozes e Furiosos 1 também assinou o carro. Então, como sempre, os carros do Shahar perfeitamente montados. Banco novo, feito sobre encomenda, com as cores corretas. Mano, é sempre coisa de outro planeta. É claro, ele não tem a gaiola aqui atrás, não tem o tubo de nitro ainda. Mas é uma coisa que ele quer fazer, mas ele também quer deixar o carro usável para ir para os lugares. Né? Então tem aquela coisa de... Tudo bem, ele pode fazer perfeito... Mas ele também quer usar o carro, o carro é dele. Então, mano, tá, tá, tá genial, velho, tá genial. E a coleçãozinha aqui não tem como, né? Se vocês quiserem ver vídeos sobre todos esses carros aqui dos Velozes e Furiosos, estão todos assinados, principalmente o RX-7, tá assinado por praticamente todo mundo do filme. Entra no meu canal, eu fiz alguns vídeos sobre esses outros carros no ano passado, dá uma olhada que você não vai se arrepender. Como eu prometi pra vocês, agora tá na hora da gente sortear o ganhador do Pix do último vídeo, rapaziada. O vídeo do esgoto do GTA, que inclusive foi um sonho realizado, eu tava lendo nos comentários agora. E um monte de gente entende o meu sonho, teve um cara que não entendeu, que comentou qual que é a graça de entrar no esgoto com o Corvette. Ele claramente não jogou GTA V, né? Mas eu carreguei todos os comentários aqui no meu computador e a gente vai escolher uma pessoa pra ganhar os 20 então no Pix, pra você poder ir comprar um pastel ou uma coca, talvez, dependendo da cidade, dá até pra comprar dois pastéis e uma coca. Lá em Curitiba tá muito caro, então dá um pastel só e um caldo de cana e acabou. Vamos apertar aqui em Start e sortear, vamos ver quem que vai ganhar, quem que vai ganhar, quem que vai ganhar? Patrick Pessoa, eu dava um 360 na frente dele pra ativar as 5 estrelas. Você é meio maluco, né mano? Eu não consigo imaginar alguém em sua consciência... Carro estacionado do narcotráfico, parado, olhando pra você. O cara literalmente achando que você quer comprar produtos dele. Muito GTA, né? E você, dando um 360, cavalinho de pau na frente dele com o Corvetão, raspou tudo o fundo do Corvette naquele vídeo. Nossa senhora. Se você não viu, 
vai ver. Patrick, entre em contato comigo, me chama no Instagram. Vou estar tá esperando você lá, hein? Vamos organizar esse prêmio. E ó, rapaziada, comenta aqui embaixo. Tá tendo um sorteio nesse vídeo. Eu vou sortear o ganhador no próximo vídeo. Então fica ligado, não perde os vídeos, porque você pode ter ganhado um Pix e não saber. Qual é a sua garagem dos sonhos do Velozes e Furiosos? Escolhe três carros de qualquer um dos filmes pra você ter na sua garagem. Se você fosse montar uma garagem que nem a do Shahar, como é que ela seria? Deixa aqui nos comentários. Espero que vocês tenham gostado e lembre-se, sempre em frente.